hello everyone today we are going to study about the Montezia fracture dislocation so let's go with the topic so when you heard the uh, term like Montezia you have to remember the three okay sorry you have to remember three m okay for uh, one m like uh, the name Montezia which is given by the uh, name of the person who contributed uh, to the Montezia fracture or something so Montezia and then the second M is for the medial so the medial bone for the forearm is ulna so there will be the fracture of the ulna which for the remembering okay and for another M then there will be the fracture on the mouth mouth means like proximal part so there is the involvement uh, like fracture of the proximal one third part of the ulna and there will be the uh, dislocation of the uh, proximal radial ulnar joint so it is termed as Mondesia fracture so let's go okay. uh, like it is described by the Montezia and the fracture uh, like upper one third of the ulna with the dislocation of the head of the radius or the dislocation of the uh, radial, uh, proximal radial ulna joint so as already talked about that like medial bone that ulna there will be the fracture and that causes the dislocation of the head of the radius or the radio ulna joint and then the recently like definition has been extended like if any fracture of the ulna associated with the dislocation of the radio capitular joint okay uh, including trans fracture in which the proximal radio ulnar joint remains intact so uh, like if the proximal radio ulnar joint is intact but like if there is a uh, dislocation of the radio capitular joint and uh, which inc including like trans fracture uh, then we can uh, define it as Montezia fracture also so it is uh, usually termed as the true acarious lesion because like it is often missed why it is often missed is the, like uh, missed by the patient as like patient will reflexly pull the elbow after the fall and the reduces uh, like the reflex will reduces the dislocation unknowingly so it is it will missed by the patient and by the physician like if uh, like physician order the uh, radiograph and then he or she forgot to uh, include the elbow in that like fracture of the forearm then uh, like there is high chance of missing this Montezia fracture so uh, that can also one of the a thing why it is missed and missed by the radiologist as if he or she fails to utilize the Mac Laughlin line in the radiograph as like Mac Laughlin line is this line uh, the, this line like if the, the disruption of this line then we can uh, suspect like there is the Montezia fracture but if the radiologist uh, failed to utilize this line then uh, there is high chance that it will be missed so as already talked like in the Montezia fracture uh, there is the frac uh, fracture in the upper one third of the ulna and that will cause the dislocation of the proximal radial ulnar joint so like its counterpart is Galaxy fracture Galaxy fracture and the dislocation so the counterpart in the <coughs> in this uh, fractures like we have uh, already talked about like uh, that feature so in the Montezia fracture then uh, like medial bone all uh, bone will be uh, involved and then there will be the upper one third part and then uh, there will be the proximal radio ulna will be involved but the counterpart is Galaxy fracture then there will be the radius fracture and the here upper one third here lower one third of the radius and here will be the distal uh, radio ulnar joint will be involved so the counterpart of the uh, Montezia fracture is Galaxy fracture uh, for the Galaxy fracture we will talk in the uh, next video but uh, for the uh, remembering we can remember this okay like there is a fracture of the upper one third of the ulna which causes also dislocation of the proximal radio ulna joint which you can see in the figure also so the mechanism of injury as like 
fall on the outstretched hand and the first position of the forearm direct blow on the back of the upper forearm so that uh, will cause uh, the uh, mechanism of the injury or this type of fracture for the classification bodo have gives the has given the classification to uh, I, 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 and the IV. So, just for the remembering, like in the eye, there will be the anterior dislocation of the head of the radius. Here will be the posterior dislocation of the head of the radius. Here will be the lateral dislocation of the head of the radius. And here will be the fracture of the both radius and ulna. And there will be the anterior dislocation of the head of the radius. So this is just one of the overview uh, to remembering the classification. So as the in the classification also there is the anterior dislocation of the head of the radius with fracture. Uh, ulna at upper third with the anterior angulation and the type 2 posterior dislocation of the head of the radius and the fractured proximal ulna with posterior angulation and in the type 3 there will be the lateral dislocation of the uh, like lateral dislocation of the uh, ulna uh, like okay uh, lateral dislocation of the uh, head uh, of the radius and the pro uh, fracture proximal ulna with the lateral angulation and type 4 there will be the fracture of the both uh, and there will be the anterior dislocation of the head of the radius with anterior angulation so for the clinical feature the ulna deformity is obvious because there is the fracture of the ulna and the dislocated head of radius is masked by the swelling uh, as there is fracture and there can be swelling and the pain and tenderness on the lateral side of the elbow and the wrist and the hands should be examined for the sign of injury of the radial nerve and we have to examine if there is any nerve or the vessel compressed or compromised due to the fracture so for the diagnosis based on the clinical feature and the imaging for the imaging anterior posterior and the lateral view must be sent so in the imaging like there is the fracture and the dislocation of the radial ulnar joint and here you can also see that there is the fracture of the ulna and here also uh, and here also can be seen for the treatment like restore the length of the fracture ulna and the ulna uh, fracture reduces accurately bone reserve to full length and then fixed with the plate and the screw and the uh, radial head usually reduces once the ulna has been fixed which like here is the fracture here is the fracture and the fixation are used in the uh, this type of fracture so stability must be tested uh, through full range and if the radius head does not reduce or not stable open reduction should be done if the elbow is completely stable then flexion extension and rotation can be started after 10 days if there is doubt, the arm should be immobilized in plaster with the elbow flexed for six weeks. So for the complication, as already talked, that there can be nerve or the vessels injury. So we have to check for the nerve function after the treatment, and the malunion for the treatment like osteotomy of the ulna or excision of the radial head can be done, and for non-union like plating and the bone grafting uh, can be done. So for the reference. And thank you.